Thank you all for being here today. Today we're going to do something that I think will be quite interesting. But now that we have folks here, I would love to just have us get settled and put ourselves in our, in our meditative place of seeing the bento. If you could just have a piece of paper, you could just draw on it a blank bento, just a giant four boxes. The bottom left is now me. The bottom right is future me. The top left is now us. The top right is future us. Sit up straight and close our eyes. And just looking straight ahead, let's just get centered and just focus here, being in this space together. I just want you to breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth three times. While keeping your eyes closed, I want you to open your mind's eye. Just open up your brain's awareness. And I want you to imagine that your brain is looking straight ahead into a mirror of you at this moment, of your now me. It's the summer, it's 2020. And your mind's eye can not only look at what you look like, it can also look at how you feel, how agitated or restful you are. What kinds of things are on your mind? So let's just let our now me mind's eye scan us over for just a moment and see what it notices. Now lifting your chin up, imagine you're looking up into the second story of an apartment building. And inside this apartment are your now us, all the people you care about, your closest friends, your family, your coworkers, your crew. And I want you to imagine all those people sitting there in the living room, sitting on a couch all together. And you get everyone to squeeze in close and take a Polaroid. And now let's just look across and see the faces of our now us. I want you to now move your chin looking down and kind of to the right. And you're looking into the space of future me. This is you years from now. You have more salt and pepper in your hair. Your face is a bit more wrinkled. You've seen some things, but there's a wisdom in your face and there's a gentleness to your touch. And I want you to imagine you're standing there with your future me and you're feeling its compassion it has for you. How badly, how desperately it wants you to succeed and how much confidence it has in you that you will. And just imagine looking at that future version of yourself, the person that you want to be, the person that you are becoming. And just feel their presence. Just get close to them. Keeping your head turned to the right, lift your chin up. Now we're looking into future us. This is that same Polaroid of your people years from now, but it's everybody else too. And as you look into this space, I want you to imagine the faces of your now us in the future. And I want you to register the fact that our decisions that you make today, this week, will have an impact on them. Now return your eyes, still close to the center, looking straight ahead. And try to feel all four of these spaces and how they're all part of you. Just feel yourself as the center point where they come together.
All right, you can open your eyes. On that blank bento that we drew, we are going to just journal about the week ahead. We're gonna ask ourselves, what should we do with our energy in the next seven days? And as we go box by box, we're gonna be asking just that voice to say what it needs, what, what its priorities are. So we're gonna start with the box in the bottom left, and I'm gonna put a, a minute on the clock. And for the next minute, I want you to write in that now me box, write down what are the things that you need to do in the next seven days? How do you need to use your energy to take care of now me? Your now me needs are being healthy, having money in the bank, looking out for yourself, uh, running errands, doing work things. So what are those things you need to take care of in the next week? That's one minute. All right, now let's look up at our now us space. Now us space are your people. We're just gonna ask ourselves in the next seven days, who of our now us do we need to reach out to? Who do we need to give love to? Whose love do we need? What do we need to do to keep that space strong? So one minute to jot down. All right, let's go down to future me in the bottom right corner. As you think about that older, wiser version of you, the one that made the right choices, did the hard things, what does that voice tell you that you should be thinking about this week? Is it a, a mantra to keep your head on straight? Is it a reminder to continue some long held discipline? What is it that that voice says is most critical for you to be paying attention to right now?
All right, last, I wanna look up at Future Us. Future Us is imagining the world years from now. As you think about what that future us needs to be versus say what it might be trending towards now. And you think about the idea that your actions, our actions that we take at this moment will have an impact on that world. What is it that your future us wants you to do in the next seven days? Is it about a kind of uh, educating yourself or educating others? Is it about changing some behavior? Is it about supporting some larger causes or giving yourself up to something bigger than you? Let's take a minute and write down what our future us is telling us. So here you have a sketch of your priorities for the coming week. Normally what I do at the end of these sessions is I'll sort of take these and write them out into a bit of a priority list. The other way to do this is to just to have what you wrote down sitting next to you in your desk, uh, wherever you're working, so that you're just reminded of these things. Let's say instead of you know, checking your email, instead you do something that's more intentional. Uh, but today, I, I, I'd like our, the exercise we go through is, is to go deeper into whatever came out here for you that where there's most at stake. I'd like you to look at your bento and, and see, is there something here, something that's outstanding, where it's important to me, it's not clear which way things are going to go. It, it might be problematic or it might be just you're curious about it. But I'd like for you to, to look through what you've written down and try to find that thing that just sort of leaps out to you as feeling most alive. Like, I don't know what's going to happen with this, and I think I, I'd like to. I'd like to know more about it. We'll just take 10 seconds or so, figure out, decide which one you'd like to think about. What we're going to do is two simple writing exercises. So we're going to imagine that for whatever that thing is that you chose. Maybe it's that you're working on a blog post. And so here you're imagining, oh, let's imagine I, not only that I wrote the blog post, but at that it went insanely viral. It's like the biggest thing ever happened on the internet. And you put yourself in that place of imagining that that's happened. Or you stick your neck out and you apply for a job and you end up getting it. This thing that you know, you're not certain, should I do it or should I not? It ends up happening. So we're going to put ourselves in sort of a future me state where that's happened. And then while being in that space, we're gonna take five minutes and we're gonna write down like a, a narrative story about that. So as an example, let's say, uh, let's say you're trying to plan an event and you're hoping that you get these people to come. Here, your story might be, uh, when I started planning this event, you know, I, I thought no one was gonna make it, but because, and then you just start to write out this narrative. And as you write out that narrative, I want you to be creative and I want you to write down details. Like imagine you're writing a little short story that's about, you know, six to eight paragraphs long. But just allow yourself to write freely and sort of get the, the mood and the vibe of what's happening in this, in this world where this thing is successful, where this thing has turned out the way that you want it to. So we're going to do that for five minutes and then there's going to be a second part to this. So if you want to write on a piece of paper, you could do that. I'm going to type on my computer, but we're just going to take five minutes and we're just going to write about 
here's this story of this thing that I'm kind of scared of trying to figure out. Here's the story of it working out awesome. All right. So five minutes on the clock and we'll get started.
part two, we're going to take another five minutes. And now we're going to journal about this same situation that turned out the way you wanted. Except now I want you to write from the perspective of someone else in this situation. So if this is something where it's between you and someone else, I want you to imagine for the next five minutes writing from their perspective. Again, how this worked out, the way that you're imagining it, but trying to picture it through their eyes. Or say it's that you wrote a great essay or you made a great song. Try to write like as a reader or as a listener why they were so excited about it or even how they discovered it. Try to put yourself in the shoes of just another person that's in this universe and try to see this good outcome from their eyes. And just like we did with the first one, writing as a kind of novelist, including details, small things, the feelings that these people have, all again coming from your imagination, the more you can do that, the more helpful. So five minutes on the clock, and we're going to do that just from the perspective of someone else in this situation.
just about a five minutes. All right, great. This week, you use your bento to guide your time. Use this same technique of visualizing from other perspectives as a way to help ground you more and something beyond just your own desires, but maybe to give you some real wisdom about a situation. And, you know, and let's help our friends out with things like this too. This is how we can be bento-ish, not just for ourselves, but, but for the people in our lives. So good to be together. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Peace. Bye. Thank you, Elsie.